presenter, definitely not the final speaker I hope tonight, um, was my colleague at the Star before, and he spent more than 20 years, kudos, <laughs> at the Star newspaper, primarily as the editor of the paper's technology pullout in tech, and then he spent a year as the editor of the Bangkok-based Asia News Network, which is a coalition of English language newspapers in Asia. And then five years ago, um, he returned to the Star to take charge of its digital media operations. And then two years ago, he left the Star to take over as the Senior Public Relations Manager at Microsoft Malaysia. He has since, thankfully, turned to journalism to form a technology news portal called Digital News Asia, which is already uh, active. It's one month old and you can actually check it out. Um, Asuhan, from the last email correspondence that I was CC'd on, wonders what happened between Dr. Mahathir announcing Vision 2020 and launching the Multimedia Super Corridor, two moments which promised a more liberal Malaysia. So he wonders what happened then and, you know, and today with the incarnation of the Evidence Act. So I'll let him raise these observations in his uh, presentation. Before I start, I have to say, Jeff Sun rocks. Got retweeted. Actually, uh, one of the points that Jeff made as well, uh, of the apathy amongst his friends, I have to say, the first two points I want to make, I am very alarmed by the lack of outrage out there about this law. This is not just about the online world. We are overturning a basic principle of justice. You are innocent until proven guilty. We have overturned that. We have put ourselves on the map in the world here, guys, you know, I mean, Malaysia, Malay. And there's a lack of outrage that people are not up in arms. No one is writing to the editors. Yeah, we're not, they're not going to publish it in the mainstream media, but why is there a lack of outrage about this? Second, uh, this is, uh, why this law is bad amongst all the other points brought up by our speakers, is that it puts the average internet user, the ordinary Joes, at the mercy of the unscrupulous tax savvy user. It is shielding identity thieves and hackers. Not the victims are now guilty. And there is no onus for the government to go after the ones who steal your identity, post things in your names, hack your accounts, do stuff in your name. There's no onus anyway. Because you know, my KPI is mad. I put someone in jail. So that the whole system has been overturned and I I think there should be a greater sense of outrage by the Malaysian people. Uh, and this in fact brings us back to what Jackie was talking about. Uh, the, and uh, Jeff finished off this thing about the impact on businesses. Um, the SME market is a very key driver in the economy here, right? As uh, Jeff pointed out, they want to send up the GDP. And uh, recently my good friends from Google actually uh, released a uh, report by McKinsey pointing out Malaysia has actually a good distinction. Uh, the internet contributed, internet businesses and internet activity contributed to 4.1% of Malaysia's GDP. This is actually above the average. It's above the US, it's above Japan. We actually have a very vibrant internet economy here. And this, uh, amongst the factors that the McKinsey analysts that we spoke to at that time, uh, I think this was released what, in February, January? January. January. So amongst the key factors that he spoke about what was driving this is that the, Malaysia, the multimedia super corridor. I mean, Malaysia is one of the few governments in the world which had this very concrete plan to propel us into the information age, to be a player in the tech, technology world globally. Now, the plan, you know, it worked. <laughs> That's beside the point, but it has contributed in other ways. There are a lot of companies now doing research here. We may not be a Bangalore, we may not even be a Singapore, but we are still one of the destinations that a lot of Silicon Valley companies look at. Uh, the other aspect of this is that we have an actual very vibrant uh, startup scene in Malaysia, the technology startup scene. You know, we've actually spoken of this uh, in Jeff's show a few times, we've discussed this, and a lot of the people starting up technology companies in Malaysia are uh, the product of the internet generation. They're used to getting access to information, they're used to being able to express themselves online, they're used to adding to all the content 
that makes it a part of the internet uh, ecosystem here. And as I pointed out, because of the uh, internet's contribution to the GDP, they are a very key point of the economy here. So this is a government that is repeatedly, not just through this act, but other acts, shooting itself in the foot. You want to create a high income nation. How do you do that? You need to have people who are intelligent, not educated in the right way, not just merely drilled into the basics of science, maths, and you know, you'll just answer the question. And uh, a lot of our students are finding this extra knowledge through the internet. They're learning to express themselves through the internet. Because God knows, you don't get it in schools. You have to go outside the school system to learn all this trade. And, uh, and this is actually adding to the vibrancy of the internet economy here. But this is going to put a damper on it. This is like, really, we might as well post shop, tell uh, the multimedia, uh, Super Corridor, and that, close it. Najib is supposed, the Prime Minister is supposed to be announcing the next month or so, the next phase of the multimedia Super Corridor. It's an even more ambitious plan, it's called Digital Malaysia. They want to call it the Digital Transformation Plan. <laughs> you know, program, another TP. ETP, GTP, EEP. So we are going to do this, but before we do it, let's shoot ourselves in the foot so we hobble towards this vision. That's what we're doing. Right? So I, I mean, I don't get it. And the thing is, the MSC was actually an enabler for Vision 2020. And I asked the question before I was coming, I was speaking to another younger tech journalist. Of course, now every journalist is younger than me. But I was speaking to her, and I gave her a quote that. Malaysia, for Malaysia to be a developed society, economic indicator is just one. There are nine challenges. Amongst them is to create a mature, liberal democracy. A society where Malaysians are confident of themselves and their place in the world. Basically, you can speak up. Uh, three guesses. I give anyone on the floor. Who said this? Yes. Mate, the same guy is now saying, oh, wow, last week he said, Oh, it's a mistake, huh? <laughs> there must be censorship on the internet. I think I misunderstood the internet now. Because why? He never expected people to go on the internet and express themselves. <laughs> really? He never expected them to express things that you don't want to express. So, I mean, this, this has been going on. We are shooting ourselves on a, uh, in the foot again. Uh, it is a competitive world out there. You know, people are going to go to other countries. That's all. Uh, Singapore is fighting against us now to get venture capitalists to go there and fund their companies. Right? They're still ahead of us in the curve. Two weeks, two weeks ago, AVAF, we had a conference here called the Asian Business uh, Angels uh, Forum. So this was angel business investors are basically those putting money in the early stage of any tech startup. And Thankfully, and I know they were not just bootstrapping us because we are journeys, we don't, we're not PR people, or I'm not anymore. <laughs> but they were all surprised. These are uh, venture capitalists and angel uh, investors from all over the world, uh, from Europe, some were from Europe, some were from the US and all that, and they've been looking into Singapore all this time. They came to Malaysia and they were impressed. They thought that, you know, we have the pot potential to overtake Singapore in terms of tax sales. So a lot of money is exchanging hands, or a lot of pledges to make. They're going to uh, invest in a lot of companies. And then we have something like this. You can't have an internet economy when people fear to go on the internet. You can't have a high income nation where people fear to express themselves, to think outside the box, to challenge authority. You speak, you speak to any businessman and talk about the business, the great business successes, whether it's someone from like Tony Fernandez here, to Richard Branson, to even Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, what did they do? They changed the status quo. They challenged authority. What, what would happen to people like that now with this war? They can't. So, I'm going to actually do jumping and sort in a favor and stop being on my 10 minutes because, but just to add, we are at the crux. This is just the first step. Malaysian government will keep on pushing for legislation to control the internet. Uh, Jeff was pointing out what, how China censors the internet. Uh, Rice Yatim actually tried that. 
two years ago. They wanted to build a green deck to wall off the internet in Malaysia and make it our own special place. You know, it's like intellectual masturbation for Malaysian society. We're not going to go and get anyone, not going to interact with anyone outside the country, it's going to be walled off. Very slow interaction. So we're going to do, we actually thought, but there was an outrage, mainly from the tech community, right? This one, generally, is just as encompassing. It's time to go back home, get everyone you know to be outraged about this, and do something about it. Sign the petition. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Uncle Han. We're really glad you came back to journalism. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this question though. How do you think the amendment is going to, if it comes into force, is going to affect uh, online media platforms? Uh, you know, I just saw one of the latecomers to this is Premesh Chandran from Malaysia team. I think the first victims are going to be the online media platforms. So your Malaysian Insider, your Malaysia Kini, uh, free Malaysia today, thank you. <laughs> I guess I know where you're from, right? No. Okay, yeah, so all this will be the first victims. And let's face it, we've got how many thousand cyber troopers there paid to just go and disturb all these sites? So now the cyber troopers have a field day, I can go into free Malaysia today, post something, and then call up the police, hey, ah, uh, do that, arrest it. That's it. It's, that will be the first victim. Now, uh, MCMC chairman, Shari Kamizi, uh, went on the air with Al Jazeera, he was interviewed by the star, and to be fair, there are genuine cases of online defamation. Lives can be destroyed. You know, and uh, Al Jazeera did this uh, video clip of this uh, young uh, Malaysian youth who's says his life was destroyed because ex-girlfriend posted all these uh, rumors about him, uh, I think being uh, violent towards her, and all her friends went and spread it all over Facebook and Twitter and all that. And you know, he says that he couldn't win the defamation case. And then Shang, Shai Tamizi comes on and says, you see, this is the problem, because nowadays all you have to do is say, it wasn't me, and you get off some free. I say, wow, you know, if that's the level of competence and skills our judiciary and legal enforcement people have, then, you know, the problem is not the internet, it's you. Indeed, Jack.